Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 17 juli 2016. Dit is de bulletin van zondag. Our weekend bulletins normally are in English as we are today. We do have Morse code today and also an SSTV image in PD50 appropriately in context with one of our subjects today. We start as mostly on Sundays with the DX News. Hello, this is Bob McCready, GK0 FGX with the TX Talk podcast of the GB2 RS News from the Radio Society of Great Britain. And now the DX News compiled from 425 DX News and other sources. Brahm 3 Delta Alpha Zero Alpha Yankee has been active recently from Pig's Peak in Swaziland and it's expected he will remain there until the 25th of July. QSLs go via his home call, which is Zulu Sierra 6 Alpha Yankee Echo. Stu, Victor Kilo 4, Sierra Delta Delta will be active as 9 Alpha stroke Victor Kilo 4, Sierra Delta Delta from Passman Island, Echo Uniform 170, until the 22nd of July. QSL for that one via home call direct only. Clermont Hotel Kilo 3 Yankee will be active as 5 Juliet Zero Yankee from San Andres Island, November Alpha 033, from the 18th to the 23rd of July. QSL to Hotel Kilo 3 Yankee at the address given on QRZ.com. Tom Kilo Charlie Zero Whiskey is going to be on the air from Tuvalu between the 21st of July to the 18th of August. He operates CW only on the 6 to 1 60 metre bands. It's QSL direct to Kilo Charlie Zero Whiskey and log search on Club Log. He doesn't use Logbook of the World. Romeo Alpha 1 Alpha Lima Alpha will be active from Paramushir Island, Koreal Island, until July 19, as Romeo Alpha 1 Alpha Lima Alpha stroke 0. He will be operating 40, 20, 15 and 10 meters. Five radio amateurs from Russia will be active from Sea of Okotsk Ghost Group, Kamchatka, July 12 until 20, as Romeo Zulu 0 Zulu Whiskey Alpha stroke portable. They will be operating on HF bands. Hotel Kilo 3 Yankee will be active from San Andres Island 18 to 23 July as 5 Juliet Zero Yankee will be operating on HF bands. Alpha 7 X-Ray Bravo Golf will be active from Koror Island July 20 until 23 as Tango 88 Golf Alpha. He will be operating 160 to 6 meters CW, SSB and digital modes. Hotel Bravo 9, Foxtrot X-Ray Lima and Hotel Bravo 9, Mike Uniform Quebec will be active from Cambodia August 7 until 16 as X-Ray Uniform 7 Alpha Kilo Bravo and X-Ray Uniform 7 Alpha Kilo Delta. They will be operating on HF bands. Delta Delta 5 Zulu Zulu will be active from Martinique Island September 12 until October 3rd as Foxtrot Mike stroke Delta Delta 5 Zulu Zulu. It will be operating on HF bands. Kilo Charlie Zero Whiskey will be active from Gilbert Islands, Kiribati, September 24 until October 24 as Tango 30, Charlie Oscar Whiskey. He will be operating 160 to 6 meters CW. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. Now enters Pokemon Go. Played using a smartphone or tablet, this new game, based on the now nostalgic Pokemon game, gives the ability for the individuals to be lured to certain real-life areas by in-game rewards. On launch day, June the 6th this year, the Northern Territory Police, Fire and Emergency Services reminded players to look up away from your phone and both ways before crossing the street. Furthermore, the app has led players to congregate near strangers' homes. Other incidents include minor fall injuries and armed robberies. The app was also criticised for using locations such as graveyards and memorials as sites to catch Pokemon. The Darwin Police Station has demanded players not to enter the station to catch Pokemon, while the Silverton Fire District revealed that players who drive around the station or stop in restricted areas to catch Pokemon with the game have become an obstacle to the work of their firefighters, causing inconvenience. Now, just be careful of Pokemon Frivolous is not lurking atop your 20 metre beam. Home of Australia's first satellite is at it again. The Melbourne University is now designing a CubeSat and hopefully will have it ready for launch in 2018. The same university built Australia's first amateur radio satellite, Australis Oscar 5. It was launched 23rd of January 1970. It was then the first amateur radio satellite built outside of the United States. Australis Oscar 5 was a beacon on 29.45 and 144.05 with telemetry starting with HI sent in Morse code, sensors giving the battery voltage, temperature and satellite's orientation. 
Built on a small budget, it had bed springs for deploying the bird and a cut-down metallic measuring tape for antennas that extended from the sides of the satellite. At least 200 observers heard it reporting from 27 countries up to 46 days before going silent when its batteries failed. Today, Melbourne University Engineering Department students are working on the CubeSat project and restoring the Melbourne University Old Dish tracking antenna, getting it ready for launch day. Despite its small size, the satellite's state-of-the-art communication system can send more data than other satellites because of a world-first antenna that uses a special acid for inflation in space. Still up in the sky, maybe not as high, David VK4HAX tells WIA National News that yet another high-altitude balloon experiment was a huge success in VK4. Bundy Amateur Radio Club, the Habby Group, high-altitude balloon experiment, travelled to Roma for the launch. Apart from the usual payload of APRS, GPS, GoPro camera, they also had a crossband 70 cents to 2 metre repeater. And, 20 minutes into the flight some 22 contacts with VK4 amateurs. The balloon reached just under 33,000 metres. Once the balloon burst, the payload returned to Earth, some 78 kilometres from the launch site. After a two-hour trek into the bush using direction-finding equipment, Habby located the payload, and Dave says it was a very amazing experience for everybody involved. Geocaching is an outdoor recreational activity in which participants use a GPS receiver or mobile device and other navigational techniques to hide and seek containers called geocaches or caches anywhere in the world. A typical cache is a small waterproof container containing a logbook with a pen or pencil. The geocacher enters the date they found it and signs it with their established code name. After signing the log, the cache must be placed back exactly where the person found it. Larger containers, such as plastic storage containers, Tupperware or similar, or ammunition boxes can also contain items for trading, such as toys or trinkets. Geocaching and ham radio have for over 20 years gone hand in hand, a great outdoor activity on the way to your next summit. Geocaching shares many aspects with benchmarking, trig pointing or orienteering, treasure hunting, letterboxing and waymarking. And now Radio Ham helped kids camp surrounded by fire. Amateur radio was used to summon assistance when power was lost at a summer camp ranch surrounded by fire in the St George News in the USA reports. Lyndon Kendrick, KG7SXQ, was talking on his radio to a fellow ham in Idaho via a system of unmanned amateur radio repeaters linked up and down the state of Utah and into Nevada, Arizona, Montana, Wyoming and Idaho. Michael, K2UZ, called in saying the children's ranch where he works was surrounded by fire. The Lovell Canyon Ranch is a summer camp ranch designed for at-risk and special needs children. Firefighters were controlling the blaze, but the power was out, as were telephones, internet and cell phone service. Hilbert asked Kendrick to call the local electric company and let them know. Kendrick immediately found the number for Valley Electric and got on the phone with them with a bit of back and forth between the radio and the telephone. Kendrick was able to have the power company dispatch someone to the ranch to restore power. The power of green. Operating on the power of sun and wind at a site in Ireland, one noted contester has his hopes as high as the hill he works from. It's summer and Olivier, ON4EI-EIA8GQB, is back on his familiar hilltop in Ireland. More than any other radio amateur, he's truly in his elements. In this case, the elements happen to be mostly wind and sun, and he's using both to power his station. Olivier has big plans. His blog on QRZ.com describes his antenna park and the rest of his station reminiscent of a field day setup. He'll be on the air from now until the 12th of August using six antennas and two radios operating over five bands. Any successes he has will be down to band conditions, skilled operation and green energy as he competes in the IAIU HF World Championship with a call sign EI1A on the 9th and the 10th of July and in the Island on the Air contest from the 30th of July to the 31st. Olivia writes in his blog, Wow, what a pleasure to be back again on the hill and being alone for two weeks in the middle of nature. This place is my lonely paradise where I can refill my social batteries. 
Of course, he will also be recharging his scorecards batteries. He'll need them to qualify for the World Radio Sport Team Championship in Germany. As ambitions go, that's pretty powerful too, green energy or not. I'm Jeremy Boot, G4NJH, in Nottingham, in the UK. Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2 NOS en ochtends om half elf. Aanvullende informatie bij de uitzendingen is te vinden op www.pa0ete.nl. Wil verder gerust je tips, commentaar en desnoods priet praten naar xapenstaartjexdv.me. Ken jij misschien PA5ROB? Bedoel je die gast uit Zaandam? Ja. Die vaak op de camping staat daar bij Apeldoorn? Jazeker. Die altijd op de campingsavonds laat met de kat gaat wandelen? Inderdaad. Nee, die ken ik niet. Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Echo Tango Echo. Die kennen we ook niet.